and welcome to my January 2023 report on the electrical bits and bobs at our property in Huntingdonshire, Cambridgeshire, England. This diagram gives a simple view of the major components which make up our system at the moment. Further details can be found in the description below the video. Here's the usual first graph which shows the daily electrical energy coming into the property from our two solar arrays and from the grid. These figures come from the daily readings of the electricity meter and the two solar generation meters. The maximum value on the vertical axis has been put back to 70 from the 110 used last month. The total solar production this month was 239 units, giving an average of 7.7 .7 units per day. The highest production was 15.7 units on the 30th and the lowest was 0 0.8 on the 3rd. 992 grid units were imported in total, with 11 at normal rate and the rest at our economy 7 low rate. The Powerwall only completely discharged once on the 10th in the late evening. 8.4 units were exported to the grid according to the Tesla app, which was 0.7% of the total electrical energy coming in and 3.5% of the solar energy produced. The solar contribution to the month's electricity input was a little under 20%. This second graph shows where the electrical energy consumed by the property and the car came from, and like the first graph, the vertical scale maximum has reverted to 70. The figures behind this graph are mostly supplied by the Tesla app, with the car's home charging figures coming from the My Energy app. 12.4% of the energy came directly from solar, and a further 5.7% was solar coming to the property via the Powerwall, giving a total solar contribution to the energy used of 18.1%. 49.8% of the solar units went into the car via the Zappi charger, and 50.9 low rate grid units were also used for charging the car, giving an average cost per mile of 3.23 pence for this low mileage January. This graph shows the energy going into and coming out of the power wall each day, as reported by the Tesla app. 87.3% of the energy which went into the battery came back out, with the lower than usual value explained by a difference in state of charge at the beginning and end of the month. This is the self-power graph, based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self-power was 34.6%. It is obvious which days did not have energy going into the annexes storage heaters or into the car. This graph shows the solar southwest production over the years since installation. 89 units was the second equal best January over the 12 years, above the month's arithmetic mean of 76.4 and the median of 76.5 units. And here is the cumulative year-to-date graph for the Southwest Array, not showing much at this stage of the year, except that it's been a good start. This graph shows the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The newer, smaller Southeast Array still contributes significantly more than the larger Southwest Array at this time of year. Here is the distribution of the energy input and export for the past 365 days, with the vertical maximum now stuck at 110 for the next year. And this graph shows the daily solar production for that period. This final graph shows a summary of our grid electricity usage since we moved here in the summer of 2011. The grey and red lines show the number of low rate and normal rate grid units used each month as measured on the left hand scale. The grid import has fortunately started to move downwards, but the winter is not yet over. The monthly electricity bill is shown by the yellow line and the right-hand scale, and the green line shows the monthly contribution to the feed-in tariff payments, which we still get for the old Southwest Array's production, with both lines changing to a more favourable direction. We are entering the final month of our fixed tariff, which ends on 28th of February. In March, we are sticking with EDF, on their standard variable economy 7 tariff, which has a slightly lower night rate of 7 pence, although the day rate will increase by 150% to 54p. As long as we can avoid taking normal rate units, we should see a slight decrease in our costs. We shall have to wait and see what is announced for April before deciding what to do then. That's all for this month. I'll leave you with the Tesla app graphs for each day of January, and if you're interested in seeing more graphs and figures, You'll be welcome to return in a month's time.